Hey everyone, I'm Kim, the mom boss behind Emery and Kay. Welcome to Back to Basics Bootcamp Tumblr Edition, where myself and two other amazing artists will be sharing weekly videos with all the best tips, tricks, and Tumblr making secrets. Let's get to it. Week one, episode two, we're going to be talking about all things sparkly. So I'm going to be going over the most common finishes of glitter that you will find in the Tumblr making world, the most common cuts, and then I will be showing you some different ways to apply these glitters. And I will also let you in on the secret of the best and my favorite way to apply these glitters. So the first one that we're going to talk about is metallic glitter. And when I think of glitter, metallic is what I think of. It is the most basic, and I don't mean that um, as a bad thing, but it just has a straight mirror-like sparkle. And it, to me, is the most beginner-friendly glitter because it's not super picky about the base color or how you apply it. It really is a super user-friendly glitter. Next is holographic. And I like to refer to holographic glitter as the disco ball of the glitter world. It has an incredible rainbow sparkle. There are so many colors and reflections in this. I also think Holographic is a super beginner friendly glitter because it doesn't really care about the base color. It's not a picky glitter on how you apply it either. Next up is a rainbow iridescent. This glitter has a broad spectrum of color reflection and it will change based on the color glitter that you're using. But you'll see in this one, Calm Waters, it has different shades of blues, a little bit of purple in there, a little bit of gold. Now rainbow iridescence and high sparkling iridescence, which is a single color sparkle, um, they change based on the base coat of their glitter. So they're a little bit pickier and a little bit harder to work with. You just wanna make sure you have a really solid base. Next up is Opal. This is one of my favorite glitters to work with. This is semi-translucent and each one has its own different sparkle. So this one here, Killer Tofu, has blue and pink sparkle. I'll show you it on a white base and then on a black, you will be able to see the difference. What I love about Opals is that they are such a versatile glitter you get so many colors in one bottle. The hardest thing with opal glitters is choosing your base coat and making sure that it is a good base coat, that you don't have any runs or anything in it. Because it's semi-translucent, you will see them through your glitter. The final glitter finish we're gonna talk about in this video is color shifting or color shift, whichever way you wanna say it, it doesn't matter. And this glitter is literally what its name says. So, so this is a fully opaque glitter and it will shift color depending on the angle that you're looking at it. So you can see here it's purple. And then when I pick it up and I kind of turn it, it goes to almost like a deep navy. And now it's going to a dark teal, turquoise color. Color shift glitters change depending on the angle that you're looking at them and they are breathtaking. Now that we've gone over the basics of glitter finishes, we're going to be talking about the three most common cut sizes that you will see. So the first is 0 0.10, that is called a fine. Then there's 0.25, which is a medium, so slightly bigger than a fine. And then the last is a chunky, or as I call it, a chunk, which is the largest cut of glitter that we're going to be talking about today. Fine glitter, I think, is the most commonly used and probably the most popular. Um, I have to say that fine glitter is my least favorite. I really like the medium, and I think arguably the medium is the most user-friendly glitter. And then the chunky just gets a bad name because people just don't know how to apply it right and work with it. Um, I promise to share my tips and tricks with that chunky glitter, and I'm gonna make you fall in love because it's my favorite glitter, and it's my mission to make everybody else love chunky glitter as much as I do. So here you can just see the three sizes compared. Now let's go ahead and get onto the ways that we can apply them to a tumbler. So all of these tumblers that you will see, I've already prepped and painted. Katie at LLB went over that in um, our very first episode, which will be linked in the description box below. The first method to apply your glitter we're gonna be talking about is spray adhesive. This Krylon brand is my favorite. I never have issues with a nozzle, like getting all gummy and clogging up, which has happened with some other brands. But of course you can, you know, do trial and error and find the one that you like the best. So you can see my base coat here is kind of runny, but I'm gonna be using a holographic glitter on this one. So it's not gonna care how my base coat looks. So I give my spray adhesive a few good shakes and then I'm gonna hold my can about 12 inches away from my tumbler. Now you see here, I set my things down. I had to run and grab a glove. That is very important. You always wanna wear a glove on your hand that you're holding your tumbler with because this stuff is so hard to get off your skin. It is, 
it's super sticky. So you can see here as we spray it on, it gets kind of shiny. That's really helpful to um, see where you've sprayed so far. So I'm just doing up and down just straight even strokes across my whole tumbler don't forget the bottom now one of the downsides of spray adhesive is it is messy typically i will do this outside but it was nighttime so i had to do it inside and this stuff um is not not a good one to use if you don't have a space where you can spray it and not get it all over everything so now we're going to take a little trip over here to my little glitter station and like, like I, I said, said we're, we're going to be, be using, using holographic, holographic glitter. glitter on this tumbler this one is a fine cut and so it's really going to fill in every space you're not going to see your base coat really at all if your base coat isn't perfect don't worry about it holographic glitter will be your best friend so i'm just literally sprinkling it on i like to go over it probably more than necessary but i just like to make sure i don't miss any spots um, on my tumbler always remember your bottom now spray adhesive is my favorite way to apply just a fine glitter by itself I think it's the easiest the quickest and you get really good even coverage so now I'm gonna set this aside to dry for an hour or two I'll spray seal it and then I'll go ahead and be ready to put epoxy on it Robin from Pale Bird Designs will be talking more about sealing and all things with epoxy in our third episode on Friday, so check the description for her channel. The next application method we're going to be talking about is Mod Podge, which is a glorified school glue. <laughs> so when I first started making tumblers a couple of years ago, Mod Podge is how I glittered pretty much all of them. One of the biggest pros of Mod Podge is that it's easy to do right in any space that you have. You don't have to have like a separate space like you do to spray spray adhesive or when you're doing epoxy. Um, so it's really a versatile product that you can use really anywhere in your home. So today we're gonna be doing um, a medium cut opal on this tumbler and I have it spray painted um, like a kind of a rough ombre. It's blue and black. I just wanted to show you guys the difference in the opal based on the base coat. I will also say that when you are using Mod Podge, ideally you will have a really large paintbrush to apply it with. Um, I actually, um, as a maker who's been in the game for about four years, I hate using Mod Podge now. It is my least favorite way to apply glitter. So I don't have a giant Mod Podge brush anymore. I just have this regular paintbrush. But a larger brush um, is ideal because you don't get little streaks in it. One of the cons of Mod Podge is it dries really fast. So you have to really have all your stuff ready to go. You just gotta slap it on there and <laughs> dump on your glitter. So I like to go in heavy. I put a lot on here at once. Um, I'm just, as you can see, going up and down my cup and then I'm going to switch directions. I'm gonna go horizontally around my tumbler. This allows me just to spread out that Mod Podge a little bit more evenly and it helps just kind of remove that extra build up on my tumbler. As always, don't forget the bottom. Um, if you do, it's not a huge deal because we all do it. So now that I've gone horizontally, I'm going to go up vertically and that again will help just give me nice even strokes of Mod Podge and it will take off any of that extra stuff. You really can't mess with this too much because like I said, it dries super fast. So once I am happy with how my Mod Podge looks, I'm just going to, very similar to the spray adhesive, I'm just going to dump my glitter right on my tumbler. And now you will see a little bit in my glitter that I have like some little strokes in there where my Mod Podge was a little thicker or a little bit thinner. If I had a thicker brush, um, that wouldn't be something that's noticeable, but because I have that smaller brush, um, of course, you know, the lines in my Mod Podge are a little bit um, smaller. But just another reason I'm not the biggest fan of Mod Podge, but if you have limited space, it will do the job and help you get your glitter on. Once we've glittered, we have to wait a couple of hours before we can spray seal and apply epoxy to make sure our Mod Podge is nice and dry. Once I get epoxy on this too, you'll really be able to see the difference in the opal. Now we're going to talk about the two ways to apply glitter using epoxy. So the first way I'm going to show you is the hang method. And you can see I just dipped like three fingers, the very tip of my fingers, into my epoxy. I'm using like a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of epoxy on my tumbler, basically nothing. Um, and I'm just going to spread it out with a gloved hand. Now you want it to be kind of difficult to spread on your tumbler. 
Now in full transparency, I never use this method to apply my glitter. It's not one that I prefer. I always have issues with getting like weird lines in my glitter, especially if I'm using a fine cut. Um, and I find the coverage to be very similar of like a Mod Podge and I think my glitter sticks up too much. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned for the next epoxy method because that one is my jam and I promise it's life changing. So anyway, let's get through this hang method first. You're going to very, very, very thinly spread that epoxy down your cup. Now hang method means that you're not putting this on your turner after you glitter it. You're going to go ahead and put it on your drying rack. It doesn't have to spin because your epoxy is so thin. If you have too much epoxy and you put it on your drying rack as it cures, you will get little drips on it. So make sure that your um, coat of epoxy is super duper thin and then just like the other methods we're going to go ahead and dump it right from the shaker onto our tumbler get our really good coverage and then we'll go ahead and let this cure then once it's cured after like six hours you can spray seal it and go in with your epoxy um but look i almost forgot the bottom there <laughs> but we're going to set this one aside and i'm going to show you the best way to apply glitter all right, now we're gonna talk about my favorite way to apply glitter. Um, we're gonna call this the epoxy method 2.0. So you're gonna start by applying about a tablespoon or so of epoxy to your tumbler. Um, I do this on the turner, and then you're gonna let it spin for about five minutes. You'll take it off and you are going to sprinkle on your glitter. So for chunky glitter especially, this is vital. You have to sprinkle chunky glitter with your fingers. Do not dump it from the shaker. I promise you, you will be a chunky glitter hater and we cannot have that here. So always put a pile on your paper, sprinkle it with your fingers. Now this tumbler happens to be one I need for an order. So I am doing um, an ombre with a chunky and a fine, which I think actually worked out well because I know there are people who say you can't apply fine glitter with too much epoxy and they're wrong. So this tumbler, I'm just gonna show you guys that it works just the same. So now my fine glitter, I'm just going to dump out of my shaker. Um, like I said, I'm doing an ombre, so I'm just gonna get my top rim, and then I like to tilt my cup. If I didn't have chunky on the bottom, my process would be the same. I like to kind of have my cup tilted as I apply my glitter so I don't get any like, weird lines in it. But I'm just going to go right through, and after this epoxy has cured, um, this glitter literally just nestles right into that slightly thicker coat of epoxy. This tumbler, I don't even have to put a coat of epoxy over it um, to put my decals on it if I needed to. That's how smooth it is. That's how much that epoxy just nestles right in there. So. I promise if you try this method, you will find it completely life-changing. Once I'm finished glittering this tumbler, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on my turner. Because the epoxy on this is a little bit thicker, it will need to spin um, as the epoxy cures. And then after about six hours, I can go ahead and put my um, clear gloss over it to seal my glitter and I can throw in a coat of epoxy and it's ready to go. Thank you so much for watching episode two of Back to Basics Bootcamp Tumblr Edition. I hope that you found some useful information and some good tips and tricks in this video. If you did, I would love a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to keep up with all the Back to Basics Bootcamp Tumblr Edition videos, as well as LLB's channel and Pale Bird Designs channels, which I will have both listed in the description box below. Until next time, happy crafting!